ادعوا الى سبيل ربك بالحكمه والموعظه الحسنه وجادلهم بالتي هي احسن ان ربك هو اعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو اعلم بالمهتدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل لكل أمة عيدا ينفردون به بين الأمم وحيدا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد الذي سدده ربه تسديدا وآله وصحابته وسلم تسليما مزيدا ومن سار على نهجهم إلى يوم يحصل الأمر فيه وعدا ووعيدا أما بعد أيها المسلمون إن هذه الأيام هي أيام أعياد النصارى وكما تعلمون إخوة الإيمان أن كثيرا من المسلمين يشاركون النصارى في أعيادهم بناء على ميلاد المسيح عليه الصلاة والسلام واعلموا أن النصارى مخطئون في تحديد وقت ميلاد المسيح لأن القرآن الكريم قد بيّن أن ميلاد المسيح عليه الصلاة والسلام كان في وقت نضج التمر إذ يقول الله جل وعلا وهزي إليك بجذع النخلة تساقط عليك رطبا جنيا إذن فميلاد المسيح عليه الصلاة والسلام إنما كان في أيام نضج التمر يوم كانت الحرارة قد بلغت أشدها إما في الربيع أو خريف وليس في الشتاء كما يزعمون إخوة الإيمان إن من يقلد النصارى في هذه الأيام ويحتفل باحتفالاتهم 
إنما يشاركهم في دينهم والعاذ بالله تعالى وخاصة إذا كان الأمر أمر تعظيم يعظمهم في دينهم فهذا يعد من أنكر المنكرات وكبيرة من كبائر الذنوب وقد يؤدي العبد إلى الكفر بالله تعالى ويعاذ بالله وإن مما ابتليت به أمة الإسلام الإعجاب والتبعية المطلقة لأعداء الإسلام من قبل دعفاء النفوس من المسلمين الذين بلغ بهم الإعجاب والافتتان بحضارة الغرب والغربيين فأصفهوا من الداعين إلى الاحتداء بحذبها والسير في ركابها حذو القضة بالقضة وحذو النعل بالنعل شبرا بشبرا وذراعا بذراع حتى لو دخلوا جهر ضب لا دخلوا فقد روى البخاري رحمه الله عن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لتتبعن سنا من قبلكم شبرا بشبرا وذراعا بذراع حتى لو سلكوا جهر ضب لسلكتموه قلنا يا رسول الله اليهود والنصارى قال فمن يعني نعم ستقلدون اليهود والنصارى وعن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من تشبه بقوم فهو منهم فلا يجوز الاحتفاء بأعياد الكفار الذي يسمونه عيد الميلاد أو عيد كريسمس وكذلك لا يجوز تهنية الكفار بأعيادهم وشعائرهم الدينية لما فيه من مشاركتهم وإقرارهم على باطلهم وقولهم الزور والبهتان على الله تعالى بأن له ولد أو أن عيسى ابن الله والمؤمن والمسلم لا بد أن يتعلم التوحيد ويزين قلبه وأقواله وأفعاله وسلوكه بوحدانية الله تعالى وهو يقرأ قوله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله تبارك وتعالى لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يتخذ صاحبا ولم يأتي سبحانه وتعالى من أحد ولم تكن له ذرية ولا نسب كما زعمت اليهود ونصارى قالوا المسيح ابن الله وقالوا عزير ابن الله تعالى الله عما يقولون علوا كبيرا إن صورة الإخلاص تقرر عقيدة أساسية يجب أن تستقر في أعماك كل مخلوق في هذا الكون وعلى دوء عقيدة التوحيد الفطرية التي قررتها صورة الإخلاص نستطيع أن نقو بكل ثقة وإعزاز وأن نؤكد لكل البشرية المتخبطة الحائرة بأن عيسى عليه السلام عبد لله تبارك وتعالى فعيسى عليه السلام كآدم ليس له أب ولكن عيسى أم عليهما السلام ولهذا ينسبه عز وجل إلى أمه حيث قال تبارك وتعالى ذلك عيسى بن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون نعم نعم أيها الإخوة لقد حار كثير من النصارى واضطربوا في أمر عيسى عليه السلام فلا تضطربوا معهم أيها الأفاضل وأنتم على بينة من ربكم حفظكم الله النصارى اضطربوا واختلفوا في عيسى هل هو الله هل هو ثالث ثلاثة أو هل هو ابن الله لكن الله سبحانه وتعالى بيّن لنا أنه لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يتخذ صاحبه كما قال ما كان لله أن يتخذ من ولد سبحانه إذا قضى أمرا إن فإنما يقول له كن فيقول 
وإذا كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عبدا لله سبحانه وتعالى ودعا إلى التوحيد فإن عيسى عليه السلام أيضا دعا إلى التوحيد وهو عبد من عباد الله وإذا كان النصارى اليوم قد نسبوا إلى عيسى عليه السلام القوب الألوهيته فإن عيسى عليه السلام سوف يكذبهم ويفضحهم على ملئ من الأشهاد يوم القيامة حيث يقول الله عز وجل وإذ قال الله يا عيسى بن مريم أأنت قلت للناس اتخذوني وأمي إلهين من دون الله قال سبحانك ما يكون لي أن أقول ما ليس لي بحق إن كنت قلته فقد علمته تعلم ما في نفسي ولا أعلم ما في نفسك إنك أنت علام الغيوب ما قلت لهم إلا ما أمرتني به أن أعبد الله ربي وربكم وكنت عليهم شهيدا ما دمت فيهم فلما توفيتني كنت أنت الرقيب عليهم وأنت على كل شيء شهيد Brothers and sisters in Islam As you all know in the upcoming days, many individuals are going to be celebrating and witnessing Christmas, the Mass of Christ, or the Christ Mass, a holiday that many of those who ascribe to Christianity follow and celebrate during this winter season. They celebrate this holiday based on a belief that Isa, Jesus, alayhi salam, is the Son of God, and that he was born on December 25th. Be reminded and informed, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, that Christmas is a pagan holiday. Christmas has its roots in sun worship. The Roman pagans celebrated December 25th as the birthday of their god of light called Mithra. And other pagan gods born on December 25th, such as Hercules, the son of Zeus, or Bacchus, the god of wine, or Adonis, the god of the Greeks. So was Christmas really the sun god's birth, or was it the son of God's birth? When you look into history, you find that what people are really celebrating, they are celebrating the sun god's birth and not the birth of God's Son. And this is a pagan and polytheistic practice, brothers and sisters, as well as other practices, such as bringing a Christmas tree into your house and some of the other Easter traditions that we see around us. Even to this day, even to this day, Christians differ into the day of the birth of Isa alayhi salam. Roman Catholics and Protestants celebrate on December 25th. Orthodox Christians in Central Europe celebrate on January 7th. Mormons believe the actual birth of Isa salam took place on April 6th. Jehovah Witnesses don't celebrate Christmas at all since it is not approved by their God and it is not in the Bible. However, even with all of these different dates of celebration, Christian scholars still agree that no one knows the real day that Jesus Isa salam was born. And if any Christian or any individual was to read the whole Bible, nowhere would it find mentioned the day that Isa alayhi salam was born, nor would it mention the celebration of Christmas. In fact, the first celebration of Christmas wasn't recorded until 336 Common Era. And lastly, brothers and sisters, it is very important to understand that any religious Celebration is a form of worship and therefore requires credible evidence which Christmas clearly does not have. Number one, because their scriptures has not been preserved and protected like ours. And actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us when our beloved Prophet and Messenger Isa alayhi salam was born. When the date would fall off the trees as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Maryam after Maryam alayhi salam gave birth to Isa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Maryam to shake the date palm tree and you will find fresh ripe dates 
which will fall down and you will be able to consume. So from this clear verse in the Quran, brothers and sisters, we understand that Isa was born when the dates become ripe, either in the early fall or in the spring, but definitely not in the winter months. So brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all of you. Be reminded that those who imitate the Christians during these days by celebrating and participating in their holidays are really partaking in some of their religious rituals. And this is from the most detestable, the most despicable, and the most disgusting things that a Muslim can do. A Muslim, one who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and testifies to Allah's oneness that he has no son, that he has no father, that he has no spouses. This is the worst thing that a Muslim can do and from the worst type of sins and it could lead someone to disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leaving the folds of Islam and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these type of acts. And unfortunately brothers and sisters, some of our brothers and sisters are amazed and they love the practices and customs and traditions of the people of other faiths. Some of our brothers here in the West imitate completely what they see non-Muslims doing without really understanding or pondering over what they're participating in. And this is all because of our weakness in Islamic knowledge and our weakness in faith. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid us all. And even worse than that, we find some of our brothers and sisters even encouraging other Muslims to participate in Christmas, to congratulate people for Christmas, or to congratulate people with a Happy New Year, or a Merry Christmas, or Happy Holidays. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from such misguidance. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, about what would be the situation of the Ummah after he passed away alayhi salatu wa salam as Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu reported he said about the Muslim he said that you will tread the path the same path as was trodden by those before you inch by inch and step by step and hand span by hand span so much so that if they entered into the hole of a lizard you would follow right behind them. So the companions asked, Who are they, O Messenger of Allah? Are they the Jews and the Christians? So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, Who else than these two religious groups? And our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, Whoever imitates a people is from them. Whoever imitates a people and loves type of people's religious practices will be resurrected with them on the day of resurrection. So brothers and sisters in Islam, it is not permissible for a Muslim to participate in celebrating Christmas. Nor is it permissible to congratulate Christians for celebrating Christmas. As congratulating them is approving, condoning, agreeing and accepting their false beliefs that Isa alayhi salam is the son of Allah or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is part of the Trinity. And it is primary and fundamental that the Muslim learns Tawheed, that the Muslim learns about Islamic monotheism and lets it adorn his heart and his tongue and his mind and his actions and his behavior. <coughs> one of the shortest surahs in the Quran, one of the shortest surahs that you learned when you were four or five years old, that your parents were teaching you, is based on this belief and this teaching. Surah Al-Ikhlas. And based upon our belief in the oneness of Allah, and when we recite this surah and understand this surah, we can confidently say with truth and honesty that Isa alayhi salam was a servant of Allah. And even to this day, many of those Christians who we may come into contact with in our places of work or at school, or wherever we are, they do not even till now understand the true nature of Jesus. And they don't know whether Jesus is their Lord, whether Jesus is the Son of God or part of the Trinity. But you, 
Oh, dearly beloved brothers and sisters, know and understand that Jesus is a messenger and prophet and not a god or a deed to be worshipped. And if the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was a servant of Allah and he called to Tawheed, then all of the messengers and especially Jesus السلام, did the same thing. Even the Christians of today think that Jesus is the Son of God. And those who think that, they will find that Jesus on the day of resurrection will disprove them and rebut them and rebuke them for saying that him and his mother are deities to be worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah tells us in the Quran. And beware when Allah will say, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you tell the people to take me and your mother as deities besides Allah? He will say, exalted are you, O oh Allah. It was not for me to say that which I have no right. If I had said it, you would have known it. You know what is within myself, and I do not know what is within yourself. Indeed, it is you who is the knower of the unseen. And I said to them, except the only thing I said to them was what you told me to say, to worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. And I was a witness over them as long as I was among them. But when you took me up, you were the observer over them, and you are over all things witness. So brothers and sisters in Islam, be witnesses of truth upon this earth. Stand up for what you believe while you're walking on this earth. And don't be afraid to share what your Lord tells you in the Quran with other people in your communities so that you can help them come to realize the truth. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم إنه هو غفور رحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه أيها المسلمون اعلموا رحمكم الله إن أعياد النصرانية من الشعائر والشرائع الدينية المتعلقة بالدين وهي مرتبطة بالكفر الأكبر الذي إذا سمعته الجبال والسماوات والأردون إذا سمعت ذلك الكفر كادت أن يتفطرنا وأن يتصدعنا O oh, servants of Allah be informed May Allah have mercy upon all of us today that the holidays and religious festivals of Christians and especially Christmas are directly related to a major form of disbelief. The statement that Allah has a son is so horrendous, so terrible, so awful that the mountains are ready to crumble, that the skies are ready to split and the earth is ready to shake out of the atrocity of such a statement about the creator of the universe as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Maryam وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَا لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْهُ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّا أَنْ دَعُوا لِلرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدَا وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لِلرَّحْمَانِ أَنْ يَتَّخِذَ وَلَدَا and they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken a son. You have indeed said an atrocious thing. The heavens almost rupture therefrom. And the earth splits open. And the mountains collapse in devastation that they attribute to the most merciful a son. And it is not appropriate for the most merciful that he should take a son. So brothers and sisters in Islam, if the heavens almost rupture, and the earth almost splits open, and the mountains almost crumble from such a terrible statement that Allah has a son. Why don't our hearts and our minds and our bodies shake when we see people or hear people claiming that Allah has a son and congratulate people with a Merry Christmas, which is a clear sign and symbol of their going astray and following a system of belief that has been changed and altered. Is this not approval? Is this not agreeing with their false beliefs and practices? 
فإذا كانت أيها الإخوة والأخوات السماوات والجبال والأردون يتحركنا هذا التحرك الرهيب مع الذين ينسبون إلى الله تعالى ولدا فكيف بربكم يا مسلمون كيف لا تتحركون قلوبكم وأقولكم وتظنون أنه لا بد أن تشاركون مصار في أعيادهم وفي احتفالاتهم وتهنئونهم على باطلهم ودينهم الذي هو الرمز لأقيدتهم الكافرة الضالة أليس ذلك بإقرار منا على دينهم الباطل It is necessary for the believer brothers and sisters to have some jealousy to have some dignity, to have some honor in regards to Tawheed, to Islamic monotheism. And when we think about and read the many verses in the Quran, like the similar one to we just read, these an inanimate objects are affected and upset about people claiming that Allah has a son. But why aren't we affected? Why aren't we refraining from celebrating Christmas or participating in Christmas parties? or wishing people a Merry Christmas? Why are our tongues so silent when people wish us a Merry Christmas? Why don't we clarify the truth? Why are we so shy to let people know we don't celebrate Christmas and don't believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son? Our mountains and the sky and the earth, these inanimate objects better than us? Are the mountains, the skies and the earth that don't think and don't have brains and hearts better than us? Have they been given intellects and the ability to choose and know what is right from wrong while you have it? Do these inanimate objects care more about Tawheed, about Islamic monotheism and defending the truth more than you and me? al mukmin لا بد أن يغاء على التوحيد وهو يقرأ الآيات السابقة فهذه المخلوقات الجامدة تتأثر بقول النصارى بأن لله ولد هذه الجمادات تتأثر بالشدة بقول أن عيسى ابن الله تتأثر أشد تأثيرا السماوات يتفترنا والأرض تنشق والجبال تخر فلماذا لا تتفتر قلبك وعقلك وجسمك من قولهم على ربكم بأن له ولد لماذا بعد المسلمين يتساهلون في احتفاء معهم وتهنئتهم لماذا ألسنتنا تخاف أن تتكلم وتتبين الحق للناس لماذا نستهي من إنكار هذا المنكر الكبير وقد بينه الله تعالى في كتابه لماذا لا نستهي من الله ونجتنب تقديم الهدايا والتعاملهم في كريسماس هل الجمادات أفضل منا أيها المسلمون من الذين أكرمهم الله بالعقود تمنعهم من الفساد والباطل ومن مشاهدة الزور الجبال والسماوات والأردون أم نحن أيها المسلمون هل الجمادات التي لا أقول لها تغاء على التوحيد Brothers and sisters in Islam, saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son, as we mentioned, is from the worst types of lying, the worst types of falsehood that anybody could bear witness to, that anybody could approve, that anybody could congratulate something with, or that anybody could agree with. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in an authentic hadith, he said that no one is more patient than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one is more patient than Allah against the harmful and annoying words he hears from the people. They ascribe a child to him, but yet he still bestows upon them good health and provisions and endless sustenance. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in a hadith al-Qudsi, that Allah the Most High subhanahu wa ta'ala said, The son of Adam slanders me and curses me. And he should not slander and curse me. And he disbelieves in me. And he should not do so. As for his slandering and cursing me, it is that he says that I have a son. And his disbelief in me is his statement that I shall not recreate him as I have created him before and resurrect him. Ayyuhal Muslimun, 
القوا بان لله ولد اسود كذب يمكن ان نسمعه عن ابي موسى الاشعري رضي الله عنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما احد اصبر على اذى سمعه من الله يدعون له ولد ثم يعافيهم ويرزقهم وعن ابي هريره رضي الله عنه قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الله عز وجل في الحديث القدسي شتمني ابن ادم وما ينبغي له ان يشتمني وتكذبني وما ينبغي له اما شتمه فقوله ان لي ولدا واما تكذيبه فقوله ليس يعيدني كما بدأني brothers and sisters in islam a muslim who has strong faith in allah and truly loves allah shouldn't they be upset and angry from such an atrocious statement Shouldn't they be mad that people curse and slander their Creator while He still provides for them, still gives them food, still gives them air to breathe, still gives them water to drink, still gives them shelter to live? A true Muslim is one who truly submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understands to eat. And the one who does this will never be happy with people celebrating Christmas. And nor should the Muslim flatter people and appease to them by wishing them a Merry Christmas. And a Muslim who is true in his faith and truly loves the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaks the truth wherever he is. And he doesn't care what the people think about him. So it is upon us brothers and sisters in Islam to denounce these types of practices as much as we can according to our abilities. And don't be shy or afraid to invite the people to the truth with wisdom and fine preaching with proof and evidence from the Quran and Sunnah. So look at this upcoming Christmas, not as a time to let your creed and aqidah and beliefs melt away into the melting pot we live in, and to celebrate and congratulate people for believing that Jesus is the Son of Allah. Rather look at this upcoming Christmas season as a prime opportunity to invite people to the haq and invite people to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can. Look at it as an opportunity to help people who are misguided to be guided and guide them from the darkness of disbelief and misguidance to the light of true submission to the Creator and singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His worship because by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if one of them if one individual is guided to Islam because of you and me, it is worth more than any of the worldly things that we're working so hard day and night to try to possess. And remind them, brothers and sisters, about what Allah says in the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Ya ahl al kitabi la taglu fi deenikum wa la taqulu ala Allah illa al haq. إنما المسيح عيسى بن مريم رسول الله وكلمته ألقاها إلى مريم وروح منه فآمنوا بالله ورسله ولا تقولوا ثلاثة أنته خير لكم إنما الله إله واحد سبحانه أن يكون له ولد له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وكفى بالله وكيلا So when you call the people to the حق to the truth, remind them with what Allah reminded us with in the Quran. When Allah has said, O oh, people of the book, don't go to extremes in your religion. Do not speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without clear evidences. Indeed, Isa, Jesus alayhi salam, is the son of Mary. And he is a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is not part of the Trinity. And ceasing from such statements is better for you if you truly know and that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters in Islam, your prophet and your messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was very eager and always did the opposite of what the people of the book used to do. It was so apparent that even some of the people of the book would testify to themselves and they would say and they would come ask some of the companions saying everything this man does completely contradicts and is in complete opposite of what we do 
So brothers and sisters in Islam, if the people of the book are naive about our Eids, Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr, and they don't practice them, rather they make a mockery of them, they make fun of them, they laugh at us, they joke at us, then what about the situation with those who celebrate their holidays and celebrations and revive their ways, their customs and their religious traditions, seeking their approval or trying to appease to them or trying to satisfy them? They may have forgotten Allah's statement in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ that the Jews and the Christians will never be satisfied with you. Never be contented with you until you abandon your deen, until you abandon Islam, until you conform, until you follow their religion. لَقَدْ كَانَ رَسُولُكُمْ يَحْرِسْ كُلُّ حِرْسِ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تُخَالِفْ أُمَّتُهُ الْيَهُودُ وَنَصَارَ فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ هَتَّى قَالَ عَنْهُ الْيَهُودَ أَنْفُزَهُمْ كَمَا يُرْوَى عَنْ عَنَسْ رَضِي اللَّهُ عَنْهُ عند ما يريد هذا الرجل أن يضع من أمرنا شيء إلا خالفنا فيه وإذا كان اليهود والنصارى يتجاهلون أعيادنا ولا يحتفلون بها بل يستهزئون ويسخرون منا فما بال البعض يحتفلون بمناسبتهم ويحييها على سنتهم ابتغاء وطلبا لرضاهم وتناسى أولئك قوله تعالى ولن ترضى عنك اليهود ولا نصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم فهذه فرصتكم أيها الأفاضل أن تدعوهم إلى الإسلام كما قال تعالى قل يا أهل الكتاب تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم ألا نعبد إلا الله ولا نشرك به شيئا ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله فإن تولوا فقولوا اشهدوا بأننا مسلمون واعلموا رحمكم الله إن عزة الإسلام إن عزة الإسلام وأهله عزة دائمة قال سبحانه ولينصرن الله من ينصره إن الله لقوي عزيز الذين إن مكنهم في الأرض أقاموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة وأمروا بالمعروف ونهوا عن المنكر ولله عاقبة الأمور وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا أن تنصروا الله ينصركم ويثبت أقدامكم وكما قال عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه نحن نحن قوم نحن قوم أعزنا الله بالإسلام فمهما ابتغينا العزة بغيرها أذلنا الله So brothers and sisters in Islam these upcoming days these upcoming days be very eager to give da'wah to those individuals you come into contact with. Where they shouldn't be looked at as a time to celebrate. Rather it should be looked at as an opportunity to invite people to Islam and remind them to the truth. So seize the opportunity before it goes away. And remember brothers and sisters, that the only if you're looking for honor, if you're looking for respect, if you're looking for dignity, if you're looking for any type of status in this dunya, the only way you will have honor, respect, and dignity is when you practice Islam the way it should be practiced. As Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said, we were once a people of this kind. Umar ibn al-Khattab is talking about how he was in the pre-Islamic times, in the time of Jahiliyyah. He used to want to kill the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They used to drink alcohol. They used to have different tribal wars where they would overtake the other tribes and take all of their wealth and their women and their children and their sheep and their camel. Omar radiallahu anhu, he said, we were once a people who were misguided. We were in darkness. We didn't know what the truth was. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us and gave us honor and dignity and respect by Islam, by being Muslim. So if we were to ever seek honor, dignity, respect, or status with something other than Islam, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humiliate us and make us the laughing stock of the people. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the knowledge and confidence to help guide our neighbors, 
and help lead them out of the darkness of kubur and from, a, from the most atrocious statements that Allah is not pleased with and guide them to the light of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us proud to be Muslims and proud to be those who believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who aren't afraid to speak about it with our tongues and act upon it with our limbs and spread it wherever we go. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower His blessings upon all of us and grant us success in this world and the next. Allahumma izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Inna Allahu malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayyuha al-ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima wa aqimu salat.